What's going on guys? How are y'all doing today? Hope you're doing well. It's been a long time since I made a video where I just talked to you guys. So for 2022, the last three months, the end of October to November to December, I took a three months off not going to car shows, not really making YouTube videos. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly was just feeling kind of burnt out, uh, cause I was going to car shows pretty much every week, traveling, um, making videos, just grinding, 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 and then I just felt burnt out, I just felt a, a bit tired and just like sick of going to car shows, you know, and setting up at car shows with not a lot of people coming by because in the in the winter months it starts it starts slowing down for the sport cards car prices were dropping people aren't really buying much saving their money and people just coming by and just lowball you all day and i was just like oh man i just i just can't deal with this anymore right now so i took a three months break very needed and now I'm back. My first show back was in Atlanta for the 2023 Culture Collision. I did. I did okay. Um, I did okay. So the thing was, going back to this car show, it reignited my fire. I was getting excited again just going to car shows uh i couldn't sleep the day before that's how excited i was i slept around like 5 or 6 a.m uh, on friday and i woke up around 8 so i only had two hours of sleep and i didn't feel tired at all i was excited to get ready to come to the show it was it was pretty nice so in the cars that i had well all my inventory are from late October, so I didn't pick up anything new. I didn't really buy cards or anything online either. So most of the stuff that I had that I brought to Atlanta with me was the stuff that I had. So most of the stuff that I had prior uh, in 2022, I priced it the same basically, and none of it moved at all. Nobody even asked for it. Nobody even looks for the stuff. But when Atlanta happened, I brought six big cards. And three or four of them moved for the price that I was asking. And some even more, which was pretty good. Pretty impressive for me. Um, so that, that just tells you how the car market is right now compared to what it was back in 2022. The thing that was annoying is I sold three of my cards, right? So I had, so when I took a break, I listed most of my inventory on in my eBay, and they're sitting there for two to three months, not really moving. But once I sold it or traded it in Atlanta, guess what? They sold an hour later. Like it's crazy. Uh, I don't know if the person that uh, I traded the car to or the sold the car to, they bought the car just to like take it off eBay or, or what, but it happened three times, three different person, three different cards. So what are the odds of that? That is crazy. That was, uh, that was really weird and yeah, kind of sucks, <laughs> but it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, Atlanta was fun. Uh, a lot of the influencers people were there, so it was a cool weekend. I I live three hours away from Atlanta, Georgia, so I go down there pretty often. Um, it's it's fun. So this is my third culture collision, I believe. Um, third or fourth? How? I've been to every single culture collision, so how, however many there were, 
is how many I have been to. But I think they started in 2020. So I think this is their third annual culture collision. I like the atmosphere of it. Uh, it's not just for cards. They do sneakers. I see a uh, massage place, like hair extension, eyelashes. People are selling like random stuff like rocks and just whatever they call it the culture collision trade show so it wasn't just a card show so atlanta has this party scene this vibe to it that you go to some restaurants they blast music super loudly it's just like nightclubs everywhere that's just like their vibe that's just how they are in atlanta and this car show was like that they were blasting music so loud it was very very hard to talk to people and hear them i was set up about a hundred feet or so away from the dj booth where they were blasting the music so it was pretty loud. Um, it was kind of hard to yell over people, yell over the music. My voice, were, it wasn't super gone. I tried to keep my talking down to a minimum uh, so I wouldn't lose my voice. But it was very annoying. I, that's why I didn't really make a uh, like shoot a lot of videos while I was there because they were blasting copyrighted music and of course I couldn't record that to post on YouTube because I would get a strike uh, and I get copyrighted on it and demonetized and stuff like that so um, that was very annoying for that part uh, I but as a audience as a just regular person that's just coming to the show to walk around i understand the vibe is very fun atmosphere for you know the guests the customers um i totally get uh, both sides of the coin i get it if i were just walking around just hanging out just having a weekend there it would be really fun just music dancing it's like a nightclub uh with sport cars and sneakers and pokemon and stuff like that but also it is a nightclub so imagine you being in a nightclub for three days straight for 10 to 12 hours a day yeah it gets pretty annoying and then your ear just rings and stuff after the show is it's not the best for your eardrums i would say so that was my uh, my complaint about Coach Collision Show. Um, they they tried to have the music down a little bit a few times, but you know like they couldn't really keep it too low because they want the music to be playing throughout the show. But the venue, the room is pretty large, so the the DJ is all the way in the back of the room uh, and we were close to there so we were set up also near the back so they want the music to be blasting throughout the room so the front can hear it too so they had to put the music loud enough so the front can hear it uh, which was yeah unfortunate for us they the cool thing about this um, this car show is that they have a three on three basketball tournament they actually build a basketball court for people to play basketball in and a lot of the influencers come to play basketball uh, which is cool you know something nice for the kids to come shoot around play basketball and just having something new and unique at a car show but why are people paying thousands of dollars to travel to a car show to play basketball <laughs> Like that that's just so weird, right? <laughs> like you go to a car show to make money, to make deals, sell things, buy things, right? But you're only there for three days and throughout those three days 
you're playing basketball the whole time. So you spend all this money for flights or for gas if you drive. You gotta rent hotels. Hotels aren't cheap. Food and all that stuff, and you gotta pay $150 to $180, I believe, to play in the three and three tournament. So they're spending over a thousand dollars to play basketball. Uh, maybe that's why this year not a lot of people signed up for the basketball game. A lot I know last year most of the influencers they all play basketball, so it was um, it was funny. Um, the thing about that is it's like the court. They just it's not actual hardwood court like a basketball court would be it's kind of like softer it's I don't know how to explain it. I think it's like some kind of foam they throw on there so the court is not the best uh, a few people got hurt I think one or two guy in the one or two guys that play in the tournament uh, like I think they broke their leg or the ink or something, and that's when Josh Roth from Rough Car TV had to sub in for him. Uh, so yeah, that that's pretty dangerous. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I don't know. I, I mean, I think they make them sign waivers and stuff, but I hope uh, I don't nothing crazy happens, like getting sued or anything, because that just seems like a super super big liability just having a basketball court like that also but yeah uh, I really like coach a collision car show is uh, really cool if you guys ever get a chance to come to Atlanta and uh, go to the show I think you guys will enjoy it it's a once in a year thing so it's annually every year around January to February they would have the show uh, so a few things about this weekend that I took took to heart with uh, that I, you know like I was thinking about you don't always have to make deals say at train nights at train nights uh, it's just like a small concentrated car show with all the people hanging out there talking yes you there to make deals you know but don't forget to network with people network is really big if you really want to be in this hobby for a long time networking is amazing i went to trade night two to three days i probably made like five deals uh but most of the time i was just there just hanging out at the bar, talking to people, uh, getting phone numbers, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all that stuff, asking people advices, see their ideas, see their thoughts. Uh, so that's really cool to network, you know, because maybe you're a hobbyist, you're a collector, you're looking for this card, and then you ask other dealers. Other dealers are all connected, so they all ask each other, and they can track down the card that you need as a collector standpoint but as a business person that does this full time um, you can network asking for ideas thoughts who to invest in who to move what's a good play what's not and their strategy of how they sell and buy their cards for stuff like that it's very good to network at shows like these i think honestly it's just really good to network and connect with people in life because everybody will know somebody, everybody will know something, and know somebody that you don't know. And in life, it's really not what you know; it's who you know. At the end of the day, so I think that's uh, one thing to take away from this. And I, we had some debates and stuff with people. Uh, for example, like one of one black box and white box. I had a debate with uh, some friends of mine. Shout out to Baldy Sport Cards uh, on Instagram and Twitter, I think as well. So we were talking about one of one black box and white box, and he believes that one of one black box and white box are worth less than the original counterpart of the card, uh, since the original card is pulled from a pack and. This one on one black box and white box aren't pulled from packs, so therefore they are less valuable. Uh, yes, I guess. Uh, I the 
was, I'm like in both, of course, you know, like if I were a buyer, if I were to buy a black box or a white box, yes, I would want to get the car as low as possible, right? So I would agree with that statement. Uh, I would want to value the car less than the original one if I were buying a car so I could get the car as low as possible. But I believe uh, black box and white box are the perfect version of the original one. Because if you guys don't know what black box and white box are, they are redemption cards that you get at the nationals. So if you have like uh, panini points or you send in cards that took too long or say you get like a Lamelo Ball autograph and he never signed the card, you can go up to Panini at the National Card Show that happens once a year and redeem your uh, redemption card and they give you black box or white box one of ones. Uh, so what black box and white box cards are, are cards that say Panini print a batch of cards. Say, say you have a card, a gold card, right? That's number out of 10. So the serial number is out of 10, but they have, they printed about probably 15 of those cards. They only let 10 of it go in the packs stamped with the serial number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 for the gold cards. But they keep a few of it back because if the cards get damaged or there's a flaw in it, they can replace it for you. But if nobody uh, turns it in, right? They don't, uh, so they still have those cards. They don't really want you to destroy it because some of it are like autographed, some of it are patches, some of it are really nice cards. So, what do they do? They stamp the black box and white box one on one on those, and then they just put it in the boxes and give it out during the nationals. So, my opinion, what my thoughts is, I think those are the perfect version of the original cards because. Therefore, replacing a flawed card. So, uh, I think they are the perfect version of the original card, but that's my opinion only. Uh, so, the thing about Black Box and White Box 101 is they have like a little sticker on it, on the back usually. I don't know if it's like an actual sticker, if you can peel the sticker off, or it's just like pressed on there permanently. But they also stamp the car with a black box or a white box stamp on it. So technically it is a little bit damaged <laughs> because it got stamped with the stamp on it. Um, but sometimes I see the black box and white box one on one, the autos just look better. The patches are nicer, uh, but then again, who knows? So. What do you guys think? Do you guys think black box and white box one on ones are worth more or worth less than the original counterpart? Let me know down in the comment below. I appreciate you guys taking your time to watch my video. Long time no see. Hopefully we can continue this journey, go into car shows, show you guys around, give me my ideas, my thoughts, and my point of views on things. And I apologize for not really posting a lot of videos lately the past three months. Uh, I got some videos that I went on for my vlogs in October, the late October of 2022 in Nashville. Uh, honestly, that was not one of the best shows I've been to, so that kind of made me kind of sad, honestly, so I didn't even want to post it because I did so bad. Uh, I think it was one of those shows that I... I didn't sell a single card <laughs> that uh, so I was pretty pretty bummed out about that so but I will try to edit that soon and post it so you guys can see what uh, what the show was like also thank you so much for everybody that been messaging me and commenting down like where have you been what happened to you I miss your videos all that stuff it's really really amazing I know I'm not a big I'm not that big on YouTube compared to other guys and cards um, but you know I really really appreciate you guys for you know asking about me 
and then people do come to car shows like this last car show coach collision i had three or four people coming up saying hey i watch your videos uh what happened why haven't you been posting um are you gonna do vlogs and stuff this weekend and it was it was really nice it was really awesome that's literally the only reason why i'm making youtube videos i'm getting like one cent per per video off monetization because i'm so small so it literally does not even matter uh, i'm not really getting paid or anything like that but seeing you guys at shows you know asking about me messaging that that is really 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 awesome so thank you I, thank you very much again i really appreciate you guys watching keeping up with me my name is Kenny. I go by GM Fire Red. Thank you for watching my video and please stay tuned for more. Fire out. Woo! Please follow me on social media, Instagram and TikTok at GMFIRED. And also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like, comment down below. And thank you so much, as always, for watching my video. I really appreciate it. My name is Kenny. I go by GM Fire Red. Peace out.